Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to the next video in my beginner Ableton course. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can record audio and edit audio inside of Ableton. Now, if you haven't already grabbed it, I've got a free sample pack for all the beginners out there in the description of this video, but I don't want to keep you waiting. So without further ado, let's get going. So let's talk about recording audio inside of Ableton. The first thing you need to do is you have to set up your input in your preferences in Ableton. So I'm going to press command and comma to get there. And you can also achieve that by heading up to the drop down menu and go to live preferences right here. Now you're going to have to select some sort of input device. In this case, I'm going to pick my native instruments complete audio six because my microphone is plugged in there. Now, the next thing you're going to need is an audio track. I've got one here. If you don't have one, you can right click insert audio track or alternatively command T works. Now you're going to have to get it to input to this track. So I'm going to have to click this IO section right here. If you're not seeing this and here's where you can select the audio coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the audio from the external in, which just so happens to be my complete audio six. Now I have a few channels right now. I'm going to select audio one because that's where my mic is. And my voice is about to double up here because once I hit auto or in, we're actually going to hear that. We're going to hit in and, and you, you hear, hear my, my voice. voice. Now, when I set to in, it was a little delayed. That's what's known as latency. And if there's latency, there's a couple things you can do to fix that under options. You can reduce latency when it's monitoring. And if it's still delayed, if it's still delayed a little bit under your preferences, you can change this buffer and the smaller the buffer, the more in time it'll be. And there we go. That's pretty in time right there. That's a lot more similar. So what you would do is you would set it to in and you would arm the track and with the track armed in auto, you'll hear it as well or in with off. You won't hear it even while you're recording, but it'll still record it. And then I can record a clip and it'll record a clip right here. Now I can play it back and it'll record a clip right here and it'll record a clip right here. Or alternatively, I can record on the timeline. Now you'll notice I had a count in one bar before it started recording. And that's because under the metronome here, I selected a one bar count in. So that'll give me one bar, one bar before it starts recording. And now it starts recording on the timeline right here. And now it starts recording on the timeline right here. And now it starts recording on the timeline right here. So there we go. We have the audio there on our timeline. Now, if you're recording into a song and you only want to record for one section, you're going to want to use the punch in punch out value. And what this will do is based off this loop bracket we have here, it'll start recording and stop recording. So check this out. I'm going to put my start arrow here. I'm going to hit record. And now it's going to start recording right here. La la la. And it stopped. Here, la la la. Here, la la la. So if you have a full song and you only want to quickly record one part, you don't want to over re record over the things right here, you can do that. So there we go. That's it. Recording's that simple. We now have our audio here. And with our audio here, we can start. Starts recording. We can start to edit it. So there's a few ways you can edit audio inside of Ableton. The first is you can add fades and to add fades, you want to be off of automation mode. And to do that, you click this little automation button here. And then when you zoom in, you can see volume fades. So you can add volume fades to your sound here. Now it starts recording. Now it starts recording in case there was maybe a click or a pop when you first start recording. And now it starts recording on the timeline. Now you may want to chop and edit this. So to do that, you can select any point of a clip and you can press command E and you'll see it made a little edit. And now you can actually move these slices around and start now recording and start now record and start now recording. You can also use basic key commands such as copy and paste and start now and start now timeline. And start now and start now and start now and start now to move things around. Once you've created a loop that you want, you can press command J to consolidate that. And now this is one clip I can move together, move around as a whole. Now there are some fun parameters in here we can use to edit this further. The first is transposition right here, and this allows you to pitch around your sound. 
You have transposition here, as well as a detune, which will just move that in a smaller value in cents, while this was semitones. You have a reverse button, so you can actually reverse the whole thing as well, which is really cool. You can double how long it is here with this button, or make it twice as fast with this button here. Then the last thing I want to talk about are the is warping your sound. And warping your sound is a way of stretching the audio as though your audio is an elastic. You put pins at either end, and then you start to stretch and move that elastic and then put a pin in place. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to quickly record something else on time. So let me record something. Here. Oh. This is my recording. So I'm going to go into my recording. This is my recording. And you'll see some parts were a little late and I want to put it more in time. So to start warping and stretching your audio, you have to go to this little bar right here where you see this yellow dot. And you have to double click to insert warp markers. These are the pins inside of the elastic I was talking about. So I'm going to put one at the end. And now anything in here, I can double click and move into space. So let's do that. Let's start to get things more on time. This is my recording. So let's actually get that. This is my recording. Maybe I'll move this here. This is my recording. I like that. That's more in time. You can do this quite intensely as well. And then once that's done and you've warped your sound and you've moved things around, there are different warp modes in this drop down menu which will have different characteristics. The first is I want to show you is Complex Pro. This one sounds kind of cleanest to the ear, especially for things on vocals. This is my recording. This does this through a digital algorithm, and its benefit is it's pretty clear, but its downside is it kind of creates these, these thin digital artifacts. It makes your sound kind of smear in a sense. Complex is similar. This is my recording. It's pretty smooth, but it creates some artifacts. The cool thing about the Complex Pro one this, this. is you can shift the formants too. This works really well if you pitch this thing around, say, an octave. This is my This is my now, if you don't know anything about formants, formants, you can kind of think of like the tone and characteristic of your mouth. Me playing, uh, me singing a middle C and someone else singing a middle C is going to sound completely different because we have different formats, we have different structure and tone to our mouth. Now you have re-pitch mode, which will actually stretch this sound and compress this sound by changing the pitch. And this is actually technically the cleanest way of warping, but again, it'll alter the pitch. This is my recording. That doesn't create any weird artifacts or anything like that. Now, texture mode, what texture mode does is it takes these little grains and kind of duplicates them across. It kind of turns your sound to little micro grains and stretches it. This is my recording. The tighter the grains, this is my recording. You can kind of hear it, but if it's really big, this is my recording. You kind of heard on the end there that da da. It kind of da da. You heard the little grains. Now this flux will randomize the size of the grains. This is my recording. While no flux, it'll always be the same. This is my recording. Ding. This warp mode will be really obvious if I do this. This is this. this, this. Hear how big the grains were? This 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 is it. Now that also applies for tones mode as well. This one just has a grain size slider. This 
this, 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 this. And then the last one is beats mode. Now beats mode is really cool and it's designed for warping drums. And what it does is it plays back your sound at the original, the original way it sounds, but based off certain settings. So this is transient mode. And what transient mode does is it takes these warp markers and these little gray pseudo warp markers, which are warp markers that aren't there that Ableton believes are transients. And it will play back the original sound from each transient the way it's meant to be heard. Now, the menu below that is three different ways it'll play back. And the first is forward stop. So it's gonna play the original sound at its original speed, stop if it reaches how long that would have been to the next transient, and then play the next transient. So you hear it's a little stuttery. This, this is my recording. This is my recording. The reason that's good for drums is because drums are pretty tight and it'll play back at its original speed and using complex and texture and stuff does not sound good on drums. You can get away with it with vocals though. But you can't really do this with vocals because you hear the stutter. Now, the next is forward forward. What it'll do is it'll play the original sound at its original speed for the length of the original transient. And then until it hits the next one, it'll start to play it back from its original beginning. This is my... You really hear it at the beginning. This is my record. And the last one is forward back, where instead of restarting it, it'll play it, then it'll reverse it. This is my recording. Now, if you don't want it to read the original transient, you have a drop down menu here where it'll actually play back based off certain timings. So here, it'll play a 16th note of the original and then stop. This is my record. Recording. which gets cool rhythmic patterns in there so that's kind of a basic quick summary of warping and that's how you record audio and edit audio inside of ableton it's actually that simple so i hope you got a lot out of this video my name is Kermodi. that was recording editing and warping audio inside of ableton if you haven't already grabbed the starter ableton pack make sure to do so and if you like this video maybe drop it a like drop it a comment and share it around it would help more than you know so thanks again guys i'm Kermodi. peace <laughs>